Welcome to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield. Today we're going to be working on a piece that's been requested several times, and I'm so happy to finally bring it to you. It's the Dublin Dragons. Given that the kingdom that we're going to celebrate this week is Drakenwald, I thought it made sense. Dragons? Drakenwald? But I was really excited to bring you a piece of tablet weaving that was from outside of the Viking and Baltic region. You know, something from Ireland. There's not a lot of pieces from Ireland that I know of. And this piece is one of those that came from Dublin. And I was so excited. So it turns out in 10th century Ireland, Dublin was being occupied by the Vikings. Oh well. As early as the 840s, these long ports were set up along river openings, which gave them easy access for boats to go inland as well as out to sea. Viking raids and establishing of little villages on the coastal region of Ireland existed pretty much for the next 300 years. The first Viking Age started in 795 and it lasted until about 902. These shore fortresses were easily defendable. They had access inland to go up river for trade within the region and yes, also attacking monasteries and villages. One thing you may not realize is that these Viking longships are built wide and shallow. So they only need about three feet of water to get into these little villages upstream where they can raid and trade to their heart's content. And not only that, these longboats could carry hundreds of men. There are some longboats that they've established could carry up to 1,500 men. So as a medieval villager, that's a scary sight to see a boat coming up the river. Now the Vikings were eventually driven out of Dublin, but they came back for the second Viking Age, which started just a few years later in 914 and lasted for about 75 years. They established more Viking settlements in Waterford, Wexford, Cork, Limerick, as well as Dublin. But it also created a bit of economic prosperity for the region. But the coexistence and intermarriage of peoples in that area, forming the Norse Gales people, or the Hiberno-Norse. And many of the surnames in that area reflect this Norse Gale culture. Names like Magnus and Lachlan, which are not Irish names. Now, the 11th century, the Vikings were finally driven out of Ireland, but about 100 years later, the Normans came in and invaded. Irish just can't catch a break. But this small fragment that we're going to be looking at today is from that 10th century era when the Vikings were in Dublin. Like a couple of the other Norse pieces that we've looked at before, this is a brocaded piece. It's got a ground of tablet weaving and brocaded gold threads across the top. It's a very small fragment but you can very clearly see the dragon head pattern on it. And like the other ones that we've looked at before, it's a threaded in skip hole pattern, and it turns out so beautiful, and it lends itself really well to either two or three colors. You're gonna love doing this one. You're gonna love doing all of them. They're all amazing. Drakenwald is the 13th kingdom in the SCA and comprises all of Europe, all of the Middle East, and all of Africa. So they've got about half the planet. It was founded in 1993, and while it is the largest kingdom, it is not the most populous. And their colors are very striking, red, black, and yellow. This is going to look so cool. So grab your cup of tea, grab your loom, 18 cards, and two or three colors of yarn, and let's get started. When I originally recorded the bird was being really loud, so I decided I needed to do a voiceover for this whole section. There was just no salvaging the audio. So I have my loom ready. I have the tension peg in the starting position. I've got my yarn all ready. The yellow was running a little bit low, so I got a spare spool. I have my 18 cards and my very sharp scissors. Now the one thing that you will not see on my table anywhere is my pattern. And there's a reason for that. When we had our power outage the other day, it disconnected the computers from the printer, so I couldn't print out any of the patterns. I don't have the technical ability to make the computers work, so I'm just going to be using my computer screen. I'm going to grab the black thread and put the Lazy Kate onto the floor. Uh, once again, I'm going to leave a nice long tail at the beginning, and I'm going to pinch that against the forward rail. Now, one thing I should probably show you real quick is that there are two pegs in the front, the top peg and the bottom peg. 
and I will be using both of those, starting with the top peg and then going all the way around the loom and ending at that same peg. I'm going to go over the top, back and forth, using all of the pegs from top to bottom until I get back to the beginning again. Around the bottom peg, around the tension peg, and around the top peg. And now I'm going to repeat this with the second thread and the third and the fourth. There will be one thread for each hole in the cards. And I'm going to take card number one. The cards are labeled clockwise, A, B, C, D. I will turn the card toward me and the threads for the S threaded cards will go through the back. Now you make sure that all of the threads are taut. Make sure that they're not snagged on anything. It often snags on my loom on the foot of the loom back there. Uh, so you want to tie a surgeon's knot, which is left over right twice, and then right over left once. This knot will not come undone. Get it? Not come undone? Uh -huh. Card number two is four red threads. So we're going to do the same thing using the red threads, top to bottom, front to back, following the same path as the black threads. As you can see from the pattern, card number two is also S-threaded. So all four threads will go through the back of the card with the face of the card facing to the right.
back to black again for card number three. The last of the S-threaded cards, card number three, once again through the back of the card. And now for the skip hole version, again, you're only going to need two threads. We're going to do both of them at the same time since there's two different colors. And uh, so this part should go much, much faster. We'll take both threads, leave a nice long tail, pitch into the front, put your finger between the threads so they don't twist, and follow the same path that you did for the other three cards. And since we only need two threads for this card, card number four, again, still facing toward me, this is going to be Z-threaded, so the threads will go through the front of the card, or the right side. Yellow goes through the A, and red goes through the whole diagonal, which is the C. Did that? And now we will tie it with a surgeon's knot like we did before. Scoot it all back. And repeat for the rest of the card.
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is line up all the cards so that A, D are at the top. A. A. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A, A. A, A, and A. And then, then, darn it, I forgot my most important piece of equipment. Now, of course, the most important piece of equipment is the pencil, because if you don't have a pencil, that happens. So, let me go grab a pencil. Pencil. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is line up all of the A and D at the top. And there they are. All right. And I'm just going to slide the pencil in. The pencil is just going to hold those cards in place. So I'm going to take our new shuttle. I just got this one. It's a teeny little thing. I thought I'd give it a shot. I think it'll do much better for a smaller, um, lightweight yarn. Like uh, if you're doing silk, this will work really well. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So I'm going to pull the tail of the thread through the shed, nestle it down so it's about two fingers or so away from the row of knots. I'm going to turn all the cards forward, being very careful to keep them lined up so that they don't end up with, you know, that problem. I'm going to throw the shuttle back through the middle, unwind it a little. And I'm going to take the tail and run it backwards through so it kind of crisscrosses in that shed. Turn the cards forward again. Run the shuttle back. I'm going to loosen the tension just a teeny bit. That's yeah, a little better. All right, so let's give that a pull. See if that's ready. I don't think it is. I'm gonna give that a no, it is just not ready to pull together yet. Alright, turn the cards forward again. Shuttle through. I'm gonna press this down just a smidge. Pull again. There we go. That's starting to look better. And turn the cards one more time forward. Press. Pull that loop. And then leave the loop behind. Alright, I'm going to pull the tail just a little bit. There it goes. Snugged up nicely. I'm going to pull the tail out of the way because you're not going to need it anymore. So all the cards with a white background are going to go forwards, which is this way. And all the squares that have a gray background are going to turn that way. So what I do is I separate the cards out so that the cards that have the white background are going to stay in place. The gray background, they're going to go backwards. So in pick number one, we've got three going forwards, two going backwards, two going forwards, six going backwards and then the rest of them go forwards so i turn the backwards cards backwards forwards cards forwards very carefully making sure that the cards don't squirrel out of the way and then i place the cards that are backwards just kind of pressed up against the pencil it keeps them from turning as i do this pick so press down the shuttle through and I leave a loop behind turn the cards again same cards this is typical for skip hole weaves everything is done in pairs turn press pull the former loop and then leave that loop behind all right line up the cards again pick number three 
first three cards go forwards, the next six go backwards. So it's four, six, and the rest go forwards. Press, pull the loop, and leave a loop behind. And repeat. Press, pull, and leave the loop behind. All right, pick number five. Border cards go forward. Two go forward. Two go backward. Six go forward. Two go backward. Some people find it easier to have all the cards numbered and then follow along with the chart in the columns. So card number one, two, and three go forward. Card number, well, let's see, in this case, uh, four and five go forward. And then six and seven go backwards. You know, that sort of thing. I don't have these ones numbered, so I'm just kind of going by this many cards goes forward, this many cards goes backwards. Leave the loop behind. This is still just a little too much tension. I'll take just another bit of tension off of it. Okay, well, you can already see the pattern starting to form here. I will zoom in on it after. Okay, pick number seven. Border cards go forward, four and five go backward, and then the next six cards go forward, the two cards go backward, and the rest go forward. Missed. Backwards. These ones go forwards. Oh, this is already looking so striking. Okay, pick number nine. Three cards in the borders go forward, the next six cards go forward, the next six cards go backwards, so it's three and six, and the border cards go forward. Press, pull, leave the loop behind, repeat, turn cards. Pencil, press, pull, leave the loop behind. Okay, and the last two picks. Three go forward, the next two go forward, six go backward, two forward, and two backwards. And we have finished the entire sequence. That is it for the sequence. And yes, this is a twist neutral pattern. So you will not have a twist buildup on this, except on your border cards. And if you flip those every two, three, four repeats, everything will be fine. So I'm going to do another repeat so you can see what the whole pattern looks like. And there you have it, the Dublin Dragons, with only a little bit of Viking.
go say hi? Yeah. Hi. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> okay, smoky. You must pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. Sorry.